Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about the newly released RTX GI plugin for Unreal Engine. I'm going to step through everything you need to know about how to install the plugin, looking at sample projects, going over basic commands, and then we'll do more advanced things. We'll look at performance and memory issues. We'll look at a number of settings on the GI volume, and we'll look at different lighting scenarios. Uh, you can consider these uh, suggestions and ideas not hard rules by any stretch of the imagination, but just some different ways that you can use GI or how it might apply to your project. Now, there's a lot of topics to cover here. I'm certainly not going to cover every single issue. In fact, we have some in-flight changes that are happening right now because I'm installing the plugin on top of a 427 preview branch. We're very close to final with the plugin. It's not completely final yet, but I want to make sure you see all this information. So without further ado, let's get into the installation. Now, the installation procedure is going to be almost exactly the same as the DLSS plugin. If you've gone through that before, you'll be very familiar with this. Uh, there isn't much to it. Um, I already I have a, a 427 Preview 3 engine branch here, and I've already got the plugin installed. So what you'll want to do is unzip your RTX GI folder and go to Engine, Plugins, Runtime, NVIDIA. And in this folder, you can see all the plugins you have installed. Right here is the DLSS plugin and the RTX GI plugin. Now, much like the DLSS plugin, uh, you'll notice inside the folder there are uh, various PDFs that will step you through various troubleshooting issues, installation procedure. Uh, in fact, uh, you know, when I installed the plugin here for myself, just for my own convenience, I put the PDF files in with the plugin folder. You can have them wherever you want, but that's that was just convenience for me. Once you have the plugin installed, you can uh, go to any project or create a new one, of course, and um, get going. I happen to have our the RTX GI test project here. I copied it into my samples directory. And just to make sure it's associated with this version of the engine, it is. So let's run that. Okay, so once the test project is loaded, uh, you'll need to do a couple of things to get it going. First thing is to go to your plugins. And let's search for NVIDIA. That'll come up with all of the various NVIDIA plugins you have installed. Um, you'll want to make sure you're, you'll want to turn on your or RTX GI plugin. So I've already got this enabled. You'll just uh, click this checkbox, um, close and restart. Once you have the RTX GI plugin active, uh, you'll need to make use of a console variable. So you can open the level blueprint and uh, see that documented. Um, this is the console command r.globalillumination.experimentalplugin1, and that activates it. And you know, you don't have to put this in your level blueprint. It can be anywhere that makes sense. You can put it, for example, in your default engine.ini. Uh, as long as you have it somewhere in your project where uh, the plugin can become active. So in this case, that CVAR is going to trigger once I uh, do a play and editor. So I'll go ahead and do that. And there we go. We can see GI working. Now this example scene has just got... Uh, a couple of basic elements. It has um, a rotating light. Uh, it's got some emissive surfaces, so you can see that RTX GI can uh, create light uh, without a light source. It can do it just from uh, a, a mesh with an emissive value. Uh, anything that's visible to ray tracing theoretically has an RTX GI contribution. So you can see that there's lots of uh, colored lighting uh, bouncing around in the scene. Uh, you, you can see, uh, you know, the uh, colored emissive surfaces are generating light according to their color value. So how does RTX GI work? Well, to put it simply, you place the GI where you want through volumes. So in this case, there, if you look under volumes in the place actors category, there is a RTX GI volume actor that you can drag and drop into your scene. If we look in this example project, we have one place already, the DDGI volume. And 
It just has a number of attributes on the volume for, you know, setting it up a little more optimally than the default. The default, uh, for example, the default number of probe counts for any volume is eight by eight by eight. Uh, but you can visualize those probes and uh, get an idea for what it's doing. Now, what are probes? What is this all about? It, this is a lot like light mass importance volumes. Uh, you could you kind of think of it like that in the sense that when I lay down my light mass importance volume, uh, there are uh, probe points every so often inside that volume that um, uh, sort of determine uh, uh, how things get calculated. At each probe, we are ray tracing from this probe point here, ray tracing the scene and uh, uh, converting that uh, ray traced uh, GI sample into a texture that is then reprojected back into the world. You get an idea when you visualize the probe points, what GI is it seeing? It's right here on the, on the sphere. So you can, you can see basically what it sees. Um, so yeah, if I just go to any old random probe, that gives you a, a very solid idea of the kind of GI that probe is generating just right there on its surface. So that's handy, but you can see that the default density for GI probes aren't necessarily the most ideal. What you wanna do just to start with is to have a, a, a more or less even distribution of probes. And you can see here that that's not what's going on because I've got a, you know, a, a stretched, uh, volume, if I stretched it even more, the probes would become uh, less equidescent and uh, you start to get some weird artifacting in the application. And it may, it, you know, it's probably not going to look right because we're just not, we're just not sampling the scene in a, in a very equal way. And so we're getting some, some sort of lopsided results with any volume, which you what you want is a, a more or less equal distribution of probes. And because the uh, reprojected texture is actually a very low resolution texture, each probe is a six by six resolution octahedral map for the irradiance texture. I would recommend uh, as a starting point, you set up your probes every, you know, two to three meters roughly. Uh, in this case, we can keep it very simple. A good way to do this is uh, besides eyeballing it is just sort of either match the scale or m you go with a modified scale of the volume itself. So the volume size here is, is very clean. It's eight by 16 by eight. So I could just go eight by 16 by eight on the probe counts. Although that might be a little bit dense. You know, if, if we look at this, this box as a, a person's height, let's say this is roughly a two meter height these probes are a little bit more dense than I'd want. And I just know from experience that I don't need uh, RTX GI to be this dense to get a good result. I mean, this is, this is a very clean uh, GI bounce looking image up against the wall there. Uh, that all looks very good. Uh, but I know I don't need this many probes in order to achieve this. So I can actually get better performance with less probes and the same effective quality. So let's take the numbers back down a little bit. Let's and just keeping the proportions roughly, roughly as we have them. Let's go with uh, five, eleven, five. Right. So this produces a very clean image. We uh, get a very good-looking GI with less probes, and uh, less probes equals better performance in general, um, at least faster updates. So uh, that's a good thing. Once you got your GI volume where you want, you know, you, you don't need to visualize the probes anymore. You can just turn that off. Um, but that option is always available to you, the ability to visualize the probes. So you can uh, start to lay down your probe density, uh, just make it pretty equidescent, I would say. Uh, I mean, there are definitely cases where you could probably do less probes in the Z direction um, than maybe the X and Y axis, but that's... Per, there's, there's so many personal preferences here. I don't want to get too much into what you need to do just to say as a good starting point, a probe every, you know, two to three meters, uh, with an equal spacing will give you in general, the best results, especially as you as start and refine the scene.
The other example level in this project is GI City. And this is a, a good one for getting a sense of the range and scalability and size that you can do with GI. There is a limit to the, uh, uh, the number of probes you can have in a single volume. That limit needs to be no larger than uh, 16,384 because that equals a 16K texture. All the probes in a, in a GI volume get put to a single atlas map. And uh, no texture can be larger than 16K. So that gives you your maximum size. And same thing as before, we can select the volume and uh, visualize those probes. So as you can see, that's a lot of probes. And uh, just a couple of interesting things to note here. You'll notice a whole bunch of these probes are actually black with a red outline. That means that the probe has gone to sleep. Now it's still costing uh, memory. Uh, that, that space is basically occupied in memory. Um, but it doesn't cost anything of performance. The system does this automatically. Uh, it's, it's actually a very intelligent system with, um, uh, uh, you know, how probes should be uh, uh, placed and distributed within the volume. There's an automatic relocation feature. I'll just show you that real quick. Uh, and that's on by default. If I, if I have that feature on, you'll notice uh, uh, probes in the volume, if they, if they are able to move to a place where they can still be useful and not be stuck inside geometry, they'll do it. Um, you, you might want to turn this off if it just makes sense for your scene. Uh, the option is there. Generally, you're going to want to leave this on, though, because the, uh, the relocation uh, algorithm is very intelligent. It knows if it's inside uh, usable space or inside geometry. Um, it's, got a, it's got a good sense of uh, where is the best position for the probe. And uh, 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 that, that probe relocation feature um, uh, doesn't cost anything to do. It's just very useful to have.